once you get a campfire going, what do you got to do? You got to keep stoking it. You got to keep putting more logs on the fire. And so that's kind of the analogy I want to use when we're talking about a post-release. It's great when you have this roaring fire, but it's going to die down. It always dies down. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr, where we talk about the art and culture of running an independent record label. And we go over a lot of different um, topics on this podcast. Uh, and I like to kind of listen to you guys. And I hear I hear uh, some of your questions and emails and some of the dialogue that we have in our Facebook group and um, that I see mentioned on Twitter. Um, one of the biggest things, and, and this has been an issue for many, many years now, is the challenge of keeping an album alive after release date. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a post release strategy. And we talk a lot about uh, the the process of leading up to an album and how to be prepared and how to be organized for that. And today I want to focus on three things that you can do to help keep an album alive after release day. Unfortunately, because so much new music comes out, even amazing albums, it has nothing to do with the quality of the music. It's just, for some reason, people are really drawn to what's new and what's novel. And, and even release day, we talked about uh, this a few episodes ago in, in why release day sucks, but even release day uh, is um, uh, loses a lot of the the excitement right on release day. It, it, it's it's generally in the, the announcement of the album where there starts to build up some excitement and a little bit of unknown. And so that's what we're going to tackle today. I love talking about release day and I love talking about the release process. And a couple of years ago or, or a year ago, I put together this uh, um, release roadmap, I call it, which is a, a an illustration and it's a template that you can download for free on our website. And it's this, this this document where you can um, fill out the different things that you should be doing leading up to release day and some of the things that you can be doing after release day. And so you can get that roadmap for free by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash roadmap. And you can download that if you don't already have it. If you have it, it's also in our toolkit too. Uh, but go to otherrecordlabels.com slash roadmap. And you might find that helpful when you're planning out your next album release. Let's get into the weeds here um, when we talk about uh, how how to keep an album alive after release day. And I call it the post-release because it's post-release. Uh, and this is something that we we go into quite a lot. And, and I actually, as I was putting this together, I was thinking about a campfire. That's kind of the analogy I want to use here is, um, I don't know if you've ever built a campfire or maintained a campfire, and that's kind of the what we want to talk about. But when you finally, you know, it takes a lot of work. It's actually quite a lot of work to get a campfire going. It's not as easy as it looks. And, and you think you need paper, but paper's not really that great. It's, it's kind of like the stuff that burns really well, like grass and 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 uh, like dry grass and, and leaves and stuff that really helps it. And then, then like super small sticks is really the, um, that I've found. And I always do the teepee thing. I, that seems to be working for me. Anyway, we're not talking about campfires. But once you get a campfire going, what do you got to do? You got to keep stoking you got to keep putting more logs on the fire. And so that's kind of the analogy I want to use when we're talking about a post-release. It's great when you have this roaring fire, but it's going to die down. It always dies down. And so you need to keep on putting bigger logs and smaller logs and all sorts of things to keep it going and fanning it. You ever do that? You fan the fire? That always works. Number one uh, piece of advice I have for you to, to help with your post-release strategy is to, first of all, to identify, and this is something you want to do before the album comes out. And it's something that we got from our friend, Jamie Coletta from No Earbuds, who teaches our marketing course, which you should check out, by the way, an incredible marketing course on how to build a release plan. And uh, Jamie talks about the idea of identifying all of your promotional assets, taking inventory uh, per se uh, of uh, and organizing everything that you have in a central folder. And so what can be included in this? Well, things like a music video, things like all your pre-release singles, uh, the photo shoot um, uh, pictures uh, that, that haven't been released yet. Um, that you can put in your demos and you can put in all of these different things, behind the scenes photos, behind the scenes videos, social media stuff, putting them in the centralized folder, something like Dropbox or a Google Drive that you share with the band and you share with all the people on your team. Basically, what you want to do is before the album comes out, and you can even do this six months to 12 months before the release day, is take inventory of everything you have. I mean, literally make an Excel sheet 
where you list all of the pieces that you have. What are What's all the information that we have about the album that we can share with the public? What are all the photos we have? What are all the videos we have? What's all the 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 b-sides and um the demos and the actual singles pre-release singles and then, and then the album and the track listing what's all that that we have let's take inventory in it and then you want to you obviously you want to keep it organized in a location and have have the inventory managed um and then you can even before the 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 campaign is officially started or while the campaign is underway you can actually think what do we still need to add to this inventory uh what are we missing we don't have enough video content we don't have enough graphics that we can use on social media maybe um we didn't do enough behind the scenes stuff so let's get a picture of the band going to the pressing plant to pick up their vinyl or um let's have pictures of the the artist holding their cd and in the hand when it just came in from the mail or 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 something like that or even just little videos of you uploading it to to distro kit or uploading it to bandcamp uh, this is what's so important about this is this great quote that says what gets measured gets managed and so what happens is, is we think oh yeah we have enough to promote this record but we maybe don't actually have enough stuff to promote this record and so it's really important to take inventory before you get going and why is this important for your post release this is important for your post release because we can now say okay we have all of these things and this leads me to number number two which is to schedule your promo efforts. And so we now have an inventory of all of the promotional items. And now we want to schedule when we're going to release them. Have a plan for every piece. And so if you've made this spreadsheet, and maybe I should make a template for you and show you, maybe I will, I don't know. Um, but if you have this inventory of all of your all of your pieces. Now, maybe we put a date next to it or we put a category next to it. This Is this a pre-release uh, release? Of course, if it's a pre-release single, like the singles leading up to the album, of course, that's going to be released. What about if you have a music video for one of the songs? Is it is is it important to release it before the album comes out? Is it important to release it on release day or the day after release day? Or what if we hung on to it and we saved it for a month after release day, whenever the excitement of the album has died down and we feel like we have nothing to, to promote anymore, well, why don't we share this music video? Or maybe three months after release day. The other important thing to do is when you take inventory of everything and you're scheduling the release of all of these assets, you want to make sure that everybody on your team is aware of this. This is one of the things that really kind of frustrates me sometimes with artists is like when they get something new, like they do a photo shoot with a great photographer and they're always so keen to share those photos right away. And so like the photographer sends them a photo dump of all the best photos from the shoot. And then that the artist like uploads a few to Instagram right away. Like I'm, I'm always like, treat these pieces of content as very valuable assets. Nobody has seen these yet. Let's make sure we're utilizing them strictly for promotional purposes. Don't upload your photo, a brand new photo, if a single is not imminent or if there isn't something happening. You know that um, this happens all the time with like huge artists like Taylor Swift or something, but if they like change their profile picture to a photo that the fans have never seen, fans just go crazy because they know something is imminent. And so there's a bit of intentionality to that for those big artists. And we can do the same thing is that we can hang on to a lot of these really cool assets. And we talk about this in all of our courses and, and, and all of our material, how important it is to cherish some of these things and then to release them strategically. So the first tip was to identify all of your promotional assets. And the second tip is to schedule those assets when they're going to release. Are they going to release before the campaign, right on release day or after the campaign? Let me share something with you, and I really should put this in a in a document some somewhere, just so because I'm going to say it out loud. But it's going to be if you're listening to this, uh, and if you have a pen and paper, maybe you can write this down. But this is kind of what I think is important when it comes to um, when to schedule promotional things. Okay, let me see if this can make sense. I've written this down. So two to three months prior to release day. We're going to do one to two promotional things a month. Okay. So we're three months out from release day. I, I would say once to one or tw one or two things a month, you should be sharing. Then when we get one month prior to release day, you should be sharing one to two things per week. And what do I mean by sharing? I mean, you can, you can share what the album title is. You can 
give a pre-order link. You can do a pre-release single. You can sh give a sneak peek to merch. You can um, have the artist perform one of the songs in studio live off the floor acoustically or something uh, just to say this is a new song that you're going to hear soon. Uh, one week prior to release day, one to two promotions per day. On the day of, like actual release day, you should be promoting once an hour. Like honestly, like in in the 12 waking hours or whatever, you should be sharing a, a press clipping. You should be um, sharing links to the album on Spotify and, and sharing the physical product on Bandcamp, uploading a photo of the of the band all, you know, smiling with their new record. Then there's the week after an album. This is, by the way, this is just like a framework. This is just... I, this is a macro thing I'm trying to share with you, and you can you can completely mold this to however, but the, it's the principle behind it, right? So the week after release day, I like to do one promotional item per day. Two to four weeks after release date, maybe two to three promotional things per week, and then two to four months after you could be doing one to two per month. And so this ends up looking like a bell curve. And again, I'll share this in a resource um, for you. I don't have it put together yet, but I'll, I'll make sure you have this. Um, but it, to me, this is like a bell curve, right? It's like when you're two to three months away from release day, you're, you're doing things once or twice a month. And as you get closer to release day, you're doing th things a lot more frequently, like once or twice a week. When you're on release day, that's the top of the bell curve. That's the most active you're going to be. And then it goes back down to where you're three or four months away from release day, but you still actually have things to promote. And so that's why we, we take inventory of what we have to promote and then we... Um, strategically release those things. I know I'm getting very didactic here. I might be boring some of you. Uh, I apologize, but this is something I'm very passionate about and something I'm very excited about. And I think a lot of people um, just kind of give up after release day and they think, I don't know how to promote my record after release day. I guess I think it's dead and I've, I've moved on. And I know record labels are guilty. I've, I've been guilty of that is you get excited about the next thing because there's more endorphins and there's more reward that comes by announcing a new signing or announcing a new band. It's not as exciting to promote something that's two months old or three months old, but it's ridiculous. I mean, the, we're, I recently discovered a record that came out in the 1970s. I was like, oh, I hadn't heard this record. It's a great record. And that's like 50 years later. So it's ridiculous that we think that three months is too old. Now, I know the press and curators kind of push us into that direction, but we don't need to be doing that. The third and final thing I will say, and this is a little bit more for the artists, um, but it also applies to our record label people, is to keep creating. Number three is to keep creating. Three to six months after the record we should have something new. I don't know if that's a B-side. I don't know if the artist wrote, continued to write a song during that the album campaign that still kind of feels like that album, and we release it as a B-side or just as a new single that maybe isn't on the album, but still brings attention to the album. Uh, work on a new music video, even if it's months after the release. If you have, let's say the album comes out in the winter and you finally shoot this great video in the summer, five, six months after the release, no problem. Just release it and use it as a way to keep the album going. Uh, do a new color pressing or release on a completely new format. One of the cool things about Bandcamp, I've been realizing on a release that I've been working on that's now five months old, is when you add a new merch to that album. So let's say you've only released on vinyl and now you're going to release on CD and you upload a CD. All of your followers on Bandcamp get a new email notification that says that this record label has released a new item and it is the CD of that album and they're taken back to that album. And if they buy that CD, it registers under that album. And the same thing is if, if you add a t-shirt to that album, not a separate merch item, but a, a, a t-shirt merch version of that record, or if it's a lyric book, or if it's any sort of interesting thing, um, you can add it to that album and they get notified again. And maybe they're like, oh yeah, I forgot to check out this album. So that's something I've been experiencing. And now I have like five or six merch items next under the uh, that album uh, listing on Bandcamp. And it's really cool. It, it, it helps keep the album alive and it's still selling. And so I think it's really important to keep creating. You know, I'm, I'm an advocate of alternative album releases. So um, whether that's stripping the vocals and doing an instrumental version, or that's having the band perform some of the tracks live in studio that sounds a little bit different from the record, and then releasing that as an EP six months or a year later, doing some sort of an anniversary edition 
Um, there's so many things that you can do to help keep the album alive after release day. I hope that you have found this helpful and not too boring and not too specific, but I like to get into the weeds with you sometimes. Post-release strategies are, is something I'm very passionate about and, and something that um, can remind us all that we don't need to be discouraged after release day, that we can still keep an album alive as best as we can, as long as we're doing our job. Um, that's what's important. And so go to otherrecordlabels.com slash roadmap if you don't already have my release roadmap. And, and a lot of the things I talked about today, I'm going to put in, in some sort of document or some sort of page that I'll share with you. I don't have made yet, but by the time this comes out, I'll make sure you have that. Thank you so much for being a subscriber.